Welcome to my weekly market roundup. I am Sagar Nandi, designer and developer of Q trading systems and techniques. I used to work in IT. I retired several years ago. I worked mostly in Singapore. Nowadays I am living in Thailand. I primarily trade stocks, swing trading stocks. I regularly share my stock and market analysis in the traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on the Twitter page twitter.com sagarnandi. I share regular videos on trading in my YouTube channel Trading Profitably. All of these are open to the public. Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. After analyzing the two commodities, I will look for potential trades using the complete 360 degrees approach that is trying to identify trades where the broad market sector industry rotation, fundamental strength as well as technical strength are all aligned together. Let me start with the commodities analysis. US oil, I am looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this weekly daily template at a glance template because using this template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In last several weekly market roundups I mentioned that oil was inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart bound by resistance memory at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom. This week it broke out of the triangle pattern to the upside. The week ended with cyan that is bullish color however the shape is bearish it has a long upper tail. In the daily chart, price broke out of the sideways range with a big gap up day. However, that day ended with a long upper tail as well. After that, price pulled back to the white direction line and on Thursday and Friday moved sideways. The weekly is in cyan color. If now US oil goes up and the daily gives a cyan color flow candle that will signal a low risk go with flow trend following long setup. Gold ETF GLD In this way GLD created a reversal candle in the weekly chart. You could read the reversal signal from the band indicator as well. At that time it reversed at price extreme high even in the weekly chart. At that time I mentioned that it would be safer to apply protective trailing stop in any long position you might have. The trailing stop could be placed on the daily chart. That was a wise decision because after that price pulled back the weekly 
one week ago ended with a bearish shape and bearish color candle. This week price went up. The weekly candle shape is bullish though the color is remaining magenta. In the daily price pulled back to value area moved sideways for a few days and on Friday we have a bullish color and bullish shape candle price is going up from the value area if it continues to go up next week you may look for a low risk buying opportunity in GLD from commodities I move on to the market ETF analysis starting with the S&P 500 ETF SPY one week ago the weekly ended with bullish shape and bullish color and the daily also ended very close to the watermark resistance at all time high at that time many people were bullish and in that market roundup in the previous weekend I mentioned that market is bullish however there is no low risk buying opportunity I make a distinction between these two concepts that an instrument is bullish and that an instrument has a low risk buying opportunity why did I say that I didn't find any low risk buying opportunity in SPY at that time because in the weekly price was at watermark resistance where bearish headwind appeared earlier and which could lead to a price stop in the daily also price was near a watermark resistance where bearish headwind had appeared earlier which led to a price drop on top of that there was a bearish headwind in the daily chart at the end of the previous week looking at all these signals I concluded in that market roundup that market was bullish but it was not safe to take any new long trade in SPY that was a wise decision because this week price dropped slightly not enough to change the backdrop weekly color to yellow or magenta it is remaining cyan that is the color is remaining bullish though the shape turned bearish in the daily price moved down little bit on Friday its flow color changed to magenta that is bearish what are the possibilities now if price continues to go down you may look for a low risk shorting opportunity because the weekly is bullish in color you may not find low risk shorting opportunity in SPY you may look at the other market ETFs choose the weakest one for shorting or you could drill down into SPY look at the underlying stocks and look for low risk shorting opportunities what if the market goes up from here then we will not have any low risk buying opportunity because if on Monday price goes up and even if we have a cyan color candle on Monday price will already be at the upper boundary level that will be too extended to take a long trade following Q guideline NASDAQ ETF QQQ here also I caution against taking a new long trade one week ago that was useful because price declined little bit not much declined a little bit on Friday here also we have a bearish flow color candle there is no trade setup in QQQ right now Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA here also one week ago when price was at the watermark resistance in weekly and daily I suggested caution that was useful price dropped a bit this week here also Friday we have bearish flow color candle 
similar to SPY, even if price goes up, it will come close to the upper boundary level and you may not look for any long trade at that time. Instead, if price continues to go down, you may look for low risk shorting opportunity. Maybe entire using intraday real time fine tune chart or in one of the constituent stocks which are fundamentally weak. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. One week ago, price came to the memory trend line resistance in weekly as well as daily closed right at the memory resistance level. Looking at that, though many people were bullish on small cap stocks on Russell 2000, I had categorically mentioned that I was not going to take any long trade in IWM. Instead, looking at the very high activity and price stopping right at the memory resistance, I had mentioned that I would rather look for an exertion based shorting opportunity. That was a wise decision because price declined from the memory resistance line. How could you trade it? You could take a short call vertical at the end of previous week, putting the short leg just outside the memory resistance level. As price declined, by Friday you would have significant profit and you could book partial or full profit in the short call vertical bearish position in IWM. What are the possibilities now? The weekly backdrop color is remaining cyan. However, if the daily goes up and even if it gives a cyan flow color candle, it will come close to the upper boundary level and back right at the memory resistance level. Therefore, we will not have any low risk buying opportunity even if IWM goes up on Monday or Tuesday. We have to wait for price to break out of the memory resistance and then probably for it to pull back and then go up again, giving us a proper low risk going through long trade setup. On the other hand, if price continues to go down from here, we will not have any shorting opportunity in IWM because the stop loss will be far away above the memory resistance level. If price continues to go down, you may look for a shorting opportunity in one of the small cap stocks instead of IWM and you will probably choose some of those stocks which are fundamentally weak. That was my market level analysis. What is the market level analysis telling me? The weekly backdrop candle color for all the four market ETFs are remaining cyan. Price declined little bit. However, the backdrop color is remaining cyan. Therefore, it is not bearish. On the other hand, price declined little bit. And on Friday, all the four market ETFs gave bearish flow color candle in the daily chart. So it is not bullish as well. Market is neither bearish nor bullish. What kind of trade setup will I look for? Bullish or bearish? I will decide that based on the sector industry level analysis. Here I look at one month sector performance. I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents this week performance. Green bar performance of the previous week and blue bars performance of two weeks before that. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, three sectors went up. They are utilities, real estate, 
and healthcare. All of them are in defensive sectors. Eight sectors went down. Some of the sectors went down with pretty large percentage. Especially consumer discretionary, communication services, materials and industrials. All of these four sectors went down by more than 2%. More sectors went down than went up and the declining sectors had bigger drop percentage wise. At the sector level we are seeing more bearish picture than bullish picture. Now let me combine the market and sector level analytics together. Market level was not giving me clarity on whether to look for bullish trades or bearish trades. Weekly backdrop was bullish. How far? Friday's candle flow color was bearish. Then I drill down into the sector level and sector level is decidedly more bearish than bullish. Therefore, by combining the market and sector level analysis, I am more inclined to look for shorting candidates. And where will I look for them? I will look for them in weak industries and further in stocks that are fundamentally weak as well. Another thing that may help you in deciding where to look for your next trade setup is the sector scorecard and heat map. This doesn't only show what happened this week, it shows how the sectors are rotating over a longer period of time. You can see the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over the recent periods, 10 day, 5 day, etc. Cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. You can see that this week's weakest sectors are materials, consumer discretionary, and the strongest sectors are utilities real estate. The strongest sectors are conservative sectors. Therefore, market doesn't look so bullish to me. More sectors went down. Eight sectors went down. Only three went up. If we are going to look for a shorting opportunity, where to look for them? Using this scorecard, you may look for them in the weakest sectors, that is materials, consumer discretionary, or you could look for them in the most decelerating sectors. This week, those two also happen to be same. Doesn't happen so often. The weakest sector, materials, is also the most decelerating. The second weakest sector, consumer discretionary, is also the second most decelerating. In general, you may look for shorting opportunities either in the weak sectors or the most decelerating sectors, which happen to be the same this week. Sector level tends to be quite broad. That's why I say that you may drill down to the industry level not make your decision only based on the sector level. Drill down into the industry level and buy into the strongest industries and short into the weakest industries. For this week, I may look for shorting candidates in the weak industries in these two sectors, materials and consumer discretionary. The weakest sectors can be found out easily using the industry scorecard and heat map. This is the same scorecard and heat map that we saw for the sectors, but it covers hundreds of industries. Let me look at the weakest industries this week. They are all in magenta color over five day period. Footwear is one industry that is in the consumer discretionary sector. That is where I was going to look for 
shorting opportunities. And now I drill down, I find an industry in consumer discretionary, that is footwear, that is one of the weakest. It was relatively weak earlier, neither weak nor strong. Then it tried to gain strength, then weakened again in the latest period. That is where you may look for a shorting opportunity. Let me drill down into the industry. Now I am looking at the stock scorecard. I am looking for a short setup. Therefore, I am going to look for overvalued stock whose valuation are in magenta color. NKE, Nike is the only one which has both valuation and secondary valuation in magenta color. That is the most overvalued stock in the footwear industry. Looking at the earnings growth columns, I see that its earnings growth is declining. For the last three quarters, it declined from positive 13% to 0% to negative 10%. Therefore, I found a stock, Nike, which is overvalued with declining and negative earnings growth. That is the kind of stocks that I love to short, provided the technical charts give me a shorting opportunity. This is Nike using the Q weekly daily at a glance template. One week ago, price came close to the watermark resistance and memory resistance level. This week, price dropped. Not enough to change the backdrop color to neutral or bearish. Backdrop color is remaining cyan, similar to the market ETFs. However, the candle shape is very bearish. Price came to a level where bearish headwind appeared earlier, which could lead to a price drop. Therefore, we would expect price to drop again from that level. It already dropped for a second time from the price level and we may expect it drop again for the third time. The drop seems to have started. In the daily chart, over longer period, it is moving sideways, bound by resistance memory at the top, support memory at the bottom. How to trade an instrument when it is moving in such wide range area? Look for a short setup at the higher levels and look for a long setup at the lower levels. At the right edge, Price is declining. We have memory resistance line showing that the price is making lower highs. And on Friday, we have a bearish flow color candle. Looking at the bearish shape candle in the weekly chart and the bearish flow candle in the daily chart. You may consider taking a short trade, putting stop just above the recent high. If price goes down, you could book partial profit at the yellow direction line. The next profit target will be the memory support line. This is a short candidate where the sector level, industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level weaknesses are aligned together. That is the kind of setup that I call 360 degree setup. I will analyze more such 360 degree straight setup in the next live market meet webinar. You may register for the webinar from the webinar menu of my traders forum sagarnandi.com Let me summarize. The market level analysis is not giving any clarity on the bullishness or bearishness of the market. 
the weekly backdrop candle color of all the four market ETFs remain bullish. However, the shapes turn bearish. And in the daily charts, all the four market ETFs displayed bearish flow color candle, magenta candle, on Friday. If you drill down into the sector level, then you have more clarity, more sectors decline and they declined with bigger percentages. Looking at that, you may look for shorting opportunities more than buying opportunities. And you will look for them in weak industries and weak fundamental stocks. I found one such possible shorting opportunity, Nike. Using the 360 degrees analysis, you may find more such opportunities. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.